Why are we going through what we are going through? We must all have wounds to show. Tell never say we must all have wounds to show. Show me your wounds. I'll show you my scars. That is why we are warned by the wise not to follow a captain or a general without wounds. Jesus, the captain of our salvation, has marked symbols on his hands, stripes on his back as a testament to us, we that are alive, that we that are this world, there will be much tribulation, but we should cheer up. He has overcome the world. Why are we going through what we are going through in life? Ask your neighbor, say, why am I going through what I'm going through? I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. Ask your neighbor, why are you going through what you are going through? You are a Christian. You are a child of God. Ask Jesus, say, Lord, why am I going through what I'm going through? I'm your child. I'm a Christian. I think this is the question that many are asking. Why, why this? Why, why is this? Why am I going through this? Why am I going through what I'm going through? What is this? This many people are asking themselves this question. Why, 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 why? Let us allow the spirit to answer us through the word. Because God's word, John 6, 63, are spirit and life. Tell never say, let us allow the spirit to answer me to answer us through his word. Yes. Through the word. Because God's word is spirit and life. First Peter chapter 1 verse 6 to 9. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8 to 10. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 12 to 14. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 8 to 12. And 2 Corinthians 11, verse 25 to 30. And that Acts 9, from verse 13 to 16. And that Hebrews 12, verse 6 to 10. And that James, chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. When you take all these scriptural references, they answer our question. Why am I going through what I'm going through? Why, why, why? I'm a Christian. Why this? What is this? Why? I pray. I go to church. I fast. I do this. I do that. I give in the church. I offer. I do this. Why all this? Let me take us through to First Peter chapter 1. Verse 6 says, So be truly glad there is Wonderful joy ahead, even though you have to endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. The trials show us that what? Our faith is what? It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. 
Are you listening to that? Our faith is more precious than gold. Say, wow. wow. Did you know that? You never knew. Don't read your Bible. Did you know that? Many of you don't know because you don't read your Bible that your faith is more valuable than gold. It says, it is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole, whole world. You love him even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him and you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. The reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your soul. You love him though you have not what? Have you seen the Lord? No, some of us have seen. Yes, some of us have seen. It's not all, but some of us have seen him. Some have not seen him, some have seen him. Hallelujah. Now listen to this. It says, there's great joy ahead of us. Though our faith has been tested and by many trials, and our faith which is more precious than mere gold. Hallelujah. Why we are going through what we are going through is because God has adopted us as sons so that he may bring us to perfection like his son, Jesus Christ. He is fashioning us to make us more and more conformable to the image of his son. We all go through preliminary period in our lives. I mean, Times of testing. We all go through preparatory time, all of us in our lives. Why? Tell me, say, we all go through preliminary period, preparatory time. We all go through in our lives, all of us. That is severe time of pain, hardship, difficulties, disappointments, failure, because God cannot use a man that he is not certain or show off. So he has to make you pass through this preliminary period. Because God will never use a man, a woman that he is not sure of. He can never do that. Some of us we, or we have gone through various kind of trials in our lives. Some of us will also go through difficult times in our lives. Pass through all those.
like David, a shepherd boy who later became a king. Like Joseph, mama's baby, daddy's boy, daddy's favorite, who were thrown into a pit by his own brothers. From the pit to Potiphar house in Egypt. From Potiphar house to the prison. From the prison to the throne as a prime minister of Egypt. Can never say we all go through preliminary period, preparatory time in our lives. Because God can never use a man that is not sure or certain of. We all go through this in our lives. We all go through this. Poverty, severe hardship, dismal failures because this preliminary period, this preparatory time are preparing us for the responsibilities that lies ahead of us. Look at Moses from the palace to a wanderer running in the wilderness for his life. Look at Paul, a state prosecutor. Look what Jesus said about him in Acts 9, 13. Let's hear to 16. Acts 9, verse 13. But the Lord exclaimed, Ananias, I've heard many people talk about the terrible things this man has done to the believers in Jerusalem. Verse 14. And he is authorized by the leading priest to arrest everyone who calls upon your name. Verse 15. But the Lord said, Go, for Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and to the kings, as well as to the people of Israel. Verse 16. And I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. How much he must suffer for my name's sake. Why am I going through this? Why this? I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. He's my chosen instrument. God cannot use a man that is not sure or certain of. Somebody's asking, what about yourself? About me? Are you saying about me? I hear you. You say, what about me? Though I'm not listed in the Bible like you, I had my own fair share. Which the Spirit of the Lord said, share with them your own. Let us watch this document. Can you read what is written there? What is written on top there? Okay, let's go to the second read. The first one says what? Employment. What? Which year? 2002. Employer name. News cafe. Salary. Who is the person employed? Can we see the document? On the right, left side, surname, who? First name, ID number. I was once a cleaner in this place 22 years ago as a Christian. And I used to ask myself, why all this? I 
I'm a child of God. My employer registered me that he's paying me 500 rand to the department, but he was giving me 300 rand. I only realized this when a few years ago, the Lord said to me, print all your testament to show to your children. I asked somebody to, at the department to say, can you print, they want my ID number, they printed this, took this, and I kept it. It's, it's, it's my testament. I kept it for some years now. But when I received the document, I was shocked that I was registered being paid 500 but I was receiving 300 a month, 295 as a salary. We all go through preliminary period, preparatory time, because God can never use a man that is not certain or sure of, that can he do my work? Can he represent me very well? This is my testimony. The apostles, the prophets, and the saints in the Bible, they never covered their challenges. They never kept them secret. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 8 to 12. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 8. We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. Verse 9, we are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. Verse 10, through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. Verse 11, yes, we live under constant danger of death because we serve Jesus so that the life of Jesus will be evident in our dying bodies. Verse 12, so we live in the face of death, but this has resulted in eternal life for you. That is it. 2 Corinthians eleven twenty-five 25 to 30. They never hide what they were going through or what they went through. They listed them down. Uh-huh. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 25. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spent a whole night and a day adrift at sea. Verse 26. I have traveled on many long journeys. I have faced danger from rivers and from robbers. I have faced danger from my own people, the Jews, as well as from the Gentiles. I have faced dangers in the city, in the desert, and in the seas. And I have faced danger from the men who claim to be believers, but are not. Verse 27, I have worked hard and long, enduring many sleepless nights. I have been hungry and thirsty, I have often gone without food. I have shivered in the cold without enough clothing to keep me warm. Verse 28. Then, besides all this, I have the daily burden of my concern for all the churches. Verse 29. Who is weak without my feeling that weakness? Who is led astray and I do not burn with anger? If I must boast, I would rather boast about the things that show how weak I am. Thank you. As a Christian, you must know what it is to be disappointed. You must know what it is to be in pain. You must know what it is to fail over and over. Failure, try, failure, disappointment. You must know like the saints in the Bible. Though they had an amazing faith, they were never immune to these things. They were subject to all these things. 
though they had great encounters with Jesus, great revelation, but look what they passed through. This is what we call preliminary period in our lives. Everybody has their own. Those who take alternatives, they only postpone their evil day. Tell them, I said, those who take alternatives, they are only postponing their evil day. But we all go through this preparatory time. Paul listed, can you list your own? What you went through or what you are going through? As tell them, I said, Paul listed his own. Can you list your own? What you have passed through? Uh, what, or what you are going through. From being a cleaner in a restaurant here in the town, cleaning. Do you think I was enjoying that? No, nobody wants to be a cleaner. We all deserve a good life. Cleaning toilet day. People come in there, vomit, I have to clean it. Urinating wrong, they are drunk, I have to clean it. What was I doing when they are not there? My little pocket Bible, read. When they enter, I close, I put it in the bag, I greet them. At the end of the month, I receive my own 295. That's a salary. I have to manage it. 22 years ago. Who can say that today? You just want to get there. From being a cleaner as a Christian to a gardener in the house of a prophet. Was I enjoying that? No! I kept telling my wife that I don't want the house with a big garden. <laughs> Why? Because this house of Prophet Timmy Joshua was so big in Johannesburg, in St. Brinstein. It was so big. So I'm doing the garden. I sweep the leaves, it's winter. Sweep, put them in the plastic. The big garden, like a soccer field. When I finish with my broom, my, my break, this, the leaves are falling again. Oh. <laughs> I hated a big house with a big, a big garden. I say a big house is fine, but no big garden. But if you go to the prayer mountain today, oh my God, there are almost so many, 500 trees there. May God have mercy on us. <laughs> Toilet cleaner, garden boy. Are you Christian? Yes, I was reading my Bible. I was praying every day. I was fasting. But look at all the things that were. All were preparatory. They were preparing me for the responsibility that is ahead of me. So ask yourself, when I'm flying to, to, at the airport, if I see a, a cleaner there, how do I feel? When I have something in my pocket, I don't behave like you or many of you. It reminds me of myself. Each time I'm at the airport and we're about to take a flight and I just go to the restroom to ease myself and somebody's greeting me, good morning, say this, I look at, oh, I remember myself, you. Look at, assume I did not pass through that. Somebody will say good morning, I say yes, 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 good morning, says yes. Now when he say good morning, I say I feel because I remember this is what I was before I became. When I see somebody doing garden passionately, how do I feel? I say, oh my God, this was me. Look what the Lord has done. God can never use anyone that is not certain or sure of just use you. You embarrass God. You will embarrass him. Uh, 
attitude or character. I've answered your question, or I'm busy answering it. Why am I going through what I'm going through? I'm a Christian. Why am I going through what I'm going through? I'm a, I'm a born again. Born again. Yes. Listen to what the scripture says. Listen to what the spirit says through the holy scriptures. We all face trials, troubles, challenges of many kinds since they come in different directions and in different forms. The variety to our trials is endless. Can never say the variety of our trial is endless. They are choice assorted. Yes. What are they? These trials, the variety, persecution, rejection, envy, Jealousy, propaganda, campaign of calumny. This one is used commonly by politicians. They will use false information towards another candidate to sway all the voters to their side. We face that, we Christians also. Campaign of calumny where wrong information can be used against you so that people look at this side, not this side. We all face different kinds of trials in our lives. Poverty, setback, people are succeeding. You, you try the very same thing somebody's doing is failing. You ask yourself, ah, ah. the very same thing this man is doing it is giving him money. I'm going there, you do it, you fail dissimilarly. But you look at, but I'm more clever than you. When you, you reason, but I'm, I'm more clever than you. But you keep failing in it. You keep failing in it. The more we Christians, we are in closeness with Christ Jesus. The more we are in close proximity with Christ in life and living, the more we are likely to face troubles of many kinds because anything close to Jesus receives attack. Tell the say anything close to Jesus receives attack. This is the law of Christianity. We Christian, we fail to keep the balance. We allow the heaviness, the trials, and these things that grieves us to overwhelm us and oftentimes to get us down. What is this balance? The balance we fail to keep is this, in our walk with the Lord, they are both good and hard times alike. Somebody ask, is Christianity hard or simple? Is it hard or easy? I said that it is both. Ask, tell another say, is, it, is Christianity hard or difficult? Is it hard or easy? Is it hard or easy? Say it is both. It's both. Yes. It's both. In our walk with the Lord, we have good times and hard times. There are times we are happy. There are times we feel. We Christians are not immune to feeling. We do feel pressure at times. We do feel discouraged at times. 
we do feel the pain at times because we are not in absence of feelings. We are not in absence of feeling. That they, they, they pinch you here, yeah? you just say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> eh? <laughs> Even if you say, praise the Lord, you feel that pain. You fall. Even if you say, thank you, Jesus, the pain will still be there. You will rather thank you, Jesus. We are not immune to pain. We do feel pain sometimes. Discouraged sometimes. But you should know that trials cannot break the one who relies on God's strength. Psalm 46 verse 1 and 2. Psalm 46 verse 1. God is our refuge and strength. Always ready to help in times of trouble. Verse 2. So, we will not fear when earthquakes come and mountains crumble into the sea. Tell your neighbor, say, trials cannot break the one who relies on God's strength. Because the Bible says God is our strength and refuge and ever-present help in time of need. But trials can destroy us if care is not taken. Tell your neighbor, say, trials can destroy you. Trials can destroy you. Poverty can destroy you. Disappointment can destroy you. Failure can destroy you. Sickness can destroy you if care is not taken. In Christianity, to be happy and to rejoice is a choice. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me, Christian? Are you listening to me? I say in Christianity, to be happy and to rejoice is a choice. James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. People may see us happy and rejoicing, not because there's something good, but because we chose to rejoice. Or people may see us being in sorrow, in heaviness and troubled, depressed. Because we chose to. James 1, verse 2 to 4. James 1, verse 2. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. It is an opportunity to rejoice. Uh -huh. Verse 3. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Verse 4. So, let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Lacking nothing. Many of us, we are still lacking because our endurance, our patience has not been tested. You wait, you wait, you wait, and you take alternatives when it does not come. You wait for marriage, you wait for marriage, the next day you marry yourself. <laughs> yes. When you see a Christian say, mm, you must know that he chose to. The Bible says, consider it pure joy. Rejoice when you go through various. Rejoice. That is a man of faith. A man of faith is led by an indwelling spirit of grace, which is greater than he that is in the world. I remember those days when I'm moving from the township to the town without money for taxi. If I would go, sometimes I want to save money because my shift as a toilet cleaner were night shift from four till midnight, 12 o'clock. The rest shouldn't load. So at times I, I mean, with 295, what do you do with it? 
Even if they released that 500, they became honest. What will it do for me? It was still small then. I will walk, and I'll be laughing. Tears coming down. They, they giving thanks to God. Because I realized that to be happy and rejoice in Christianity, it is a choice. You can choose to laugh at your problems, your challenges, or you can use to complain. It's a choice. The Bible says, consider it pure joy because your endurance is tested. God wants to see how far can you go. Because if gold must be gold, it must pass through the fire. The Bible says, if our faith is so precious than mere gold, than mere gold, and gold is purified, is tested by fire, we Christians, what should test us? Ask your neighbor if gold, gold. is so perishable, is so tested by fire. We Christians, our faith, which is more precious than this gold, what should test it? The genuineness of it, the reliability of it, the strength of it. Read that first Peter 1 verse 6. First Peter 1 verse 6. So be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead. There is Even wonderful what? Okay. Hold it there. Repeat, repeat again. Let's read there. Let's read all of us. Let's look at the screen. I count to three, we read. Only verse 6. One, two, three. Let's go. So Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Uh -huh. Are you listening to that? Assume you are reading this in your poverty. Assume you are reading this in your disappointment. Assume you are reading this in your failures. 22 years ago, I read this in a toilet. I'm reading it for you now in the church. Praise the living Jesus. <laughs> Do you see the scriptures are alive? I read this way as a cleaner. I had a, a New Testament pocket Bible, only New Testament, which I keep here. I read this scripture in the toilet 22 years ago. You see what he said? He said, there's great joy ahead. Yes, I'm smiling. Not that I have arrived. I'm thanking God for the journey so far. Amen. Can I ever say, not that he has arrived. He's thanking God for the journey so far. The best is still yet to come. Yes. I read it in the toilet. I'm reading it now in the auditorium. The same scripture that was telling me. Faith, or our faith, is more precious, marvelous, and wonderful in the sight of God. That is why God wants it perfect. He wants it what? Perfect. Second Timothy three. Second Timothy three verse twelve. Yes, and everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Verse thirteen. But evil people and imposters will flourish. They will deceive others and, will de and deceive themselves. Verse 14. But you must remain faithful to the things you have been taught. You know that you are true, for you know that you can trust those who taught you. Yes. 
Hebrews 5, 8. Hebrews 5, verse 8. Mm, to 10. Mm -hmm. Even though Jesus was God's son, mm -hmm. he learned obedience from the things he suffered. Verse 9. In this way, God qualified him as a perfect high priest, and he became the source of eternal salvation for all those who obey him. Verse 10. And God designated him to be a high priest in the order of Melchizedek. No test, no trials, no promotion. God must qualify us. Our trials, our tests qualify us for a position that is a promotion in Christ Jesus. And our promotion qualify us for reward. And our reward qualify us for a greater joy. Though Jesus was the son of God, we are adopted children. You and I, we have been adopted. God just favor us and adopted us. His son, not an adopted one, his only begotten son, learned obedience by the things he suffered. He learned obedience by what? By the things he suffered. Though he was a son, and God, God qualified him and made him a priest in order of Melchizedek. God sometimes allowed these things to fall upon our lives to discipline us. Because in Christianity, God brings us down for our good. When God sees that we are not paying attention to the warnings and appeals of the scriptures, he disciplines us. In Christianity, if you don't discipline yourself, God will discipline you. Hebrews 12, verse 6. Let's hear. Hebrews 12, verse 6. For the Lord disciplines those he loves, and he punishes everyone he accepts as his child. Uh -huh. Are you listening? You and I are not immune to punishment and discipline. Once God says you are my child, he will discipline you. Read it again. Start from verse mm, and go to 10. Mm. Verse 6. For the Lord disciplines those he loves, and he punishes everyone he accepts as his child. Verse 7, as you endure this divine discipline, mm -hmm. remember that God is treating you as his own children. For whoever heard of a child who is never disciplined by its father? Verse 8, if God doesn't discipline you, he does all as he does all his children. It means that you are illegitimate and you are not really his children at all. Verse 9, since we respected our earthly fathers who disciplined us, shouldn't we submit even more to the discipline of the father of our spirits and live forever? Verse 10, for our earthly fathers disciplined us for a few years, doing the best they know how. Doing what? The best they know. They all wanted us to go to university to finish our metric. <laughs> to find the job, this. But look at Father of Spirit. He used divine discipline, poverty, hardship, failure, setback, sickness at times. Sometimes God will allow you sickness. David said it in Psalm 119. It, he says it was good for me to be afflicted so that I may learn what? Your ways. It was good that I found myself on a sick bed and able to stand so that I may learn what? Yes. When God sees, we his children, when he sees we are not paying attention to the warnings and appeals of the scriptures, he disciplines us. That is his love for us. 
ta go khalemela modimo tla pejwa ke tla o tla kula because god loves you so much that is why he's disciplining you he hit you with decimal failure you will see people that you are better than doing better than you you child of god because god is disciplining you he's punishing you because he loves you you are his then he is yours that is god that is why at times i will meet a man i met one time i met a man on a on a wheel on a wheelchair say pray for me pray for me pray for me pray for me I come again pray for me I come the spirit of god spoke to my heart and say he's a murderer he killed the people I say oh in my heart you don't see that you only see this body my spirit say oh I say you are a murderer you killed the people he say yes the spirit spoke he says his friends are in prison I say your friends are in prison yeah yeah I say some died. He say yes, another one died 2 weeks ago. I say you have to sit on this wheel for salvation of your soul. You see God. Discipline. I say all what you are saying to you now. Assume you come there he, in the name of Jesus. He he a murderer coming. <laughs> Mother, where is my gun now? I'm going home. I need money. I need to go and rob again. Hey, Jesus. Huh? Tell her never say you need a hearing heart. You need a hearing heart. Say Lord, give me a hearing heart. Yes. And what I did to the man, those who were here, I say I want to show you something. I say in the name of Jesus. I say yes, I want you to feel the power, but you will not rise up. But you must feel it that God's power is real. He says stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Were you not here? I put him in front here. And I said to him from now on, keep coming to church, learn God's word, his ways. And I mend your ways for heaven. He me was not there and he just want to stand up and do what again get the gun and do what again and go and rob you christian enter your house car this your children mark them bank they do banks the name jesus should not be used at our own will we need to hear from god you don't use it because it's not a, a good luck charm it's not a, a good luck what you just take it you must hear from god do you want to because who is the healer is it we or is god who heals no we only pray god make it happen no human being here we pray god make it happen it's either god is disciplining you or it's a preparatory time god is preparing you for the responsibility that is ahead of you or god is punishing you because he wants you to enter his kingdom one day or he's disciplining you so that you may represent him well and don't embarrass him Why ask you never why is faith so precious? Hmm, read that first Peter again that 16. First a... Peter 1 verse 6. Mm. So be truly glad there is wonderful joy ahead even though you must endure many trials for a little while. Mm. Verse 7. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It has been tested 
as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So, it's when... Slow. Are you listening to this? Our faith is what? Look at your faith. God values it more than gold. We purify gold from the alloys and amalgam in it. You see a gold that is not yet purified. It has some black dots. It has no value in that way. It needs to be what? Needs to be purified by what? Yes. We Christian, God used trials to purify us from the impure elements of this world. Pride, anger, jealousy, impatience, hatred. If you have faith, you are a Christian, and you still suffer from this, trials will purify you, will clean it. Because your faith, our faith is more precious than gold. So God wants it clean, nice, and shiny. Why? Because faith is a heavenly currency. It purchases healing. When we pray for a sick, it's faith. It's a heavenly word, currency. It purchases healing. It brings a sick man. It brings a man who is sick into good health. Faith. That is why it's so precious to God. It makes a dead man in his trespasses and sin into a new life in Christ Jesus as a new creature. It brings a man who was on his way to hell, it brings him back and turn him to the narrow road to heaven like the two sinners at the cross. One says, Lord, Remember me when you enter your kingdom. He says, today, you will be with me in paradise. Look at faith. So precious than gold. Look what faith can do compared to gold. It can bring a poor man and make him rich. A sick man and make him healthy. It can make a prostitute to be a woman of noble character. It can make a drunkard to be sober. Faith. Tell me about say faith. faith. Our faith. Our so, faith. Precious so precious in the sight of God. So precious. More precious than gold. It goes beyond the grave. Tell me about say it goes beyond the grave. Your money cannot go beyond the grave. When you die, everything is left aside. You brought nothing, you shall take what? But your faith, you are going with it. While we are here, we use faith to heal, to bless, to deliver from demonic oppression, from sickness, from this, to bless you, to raise you from poverty to riches. Faith. Even when you die, you, that side, you will still be a man of faith. Issue of I was rich, I was the biggest man in the end side. That's why the Bible says, only faith pleases God. Only faith. That is why it's so precious. It's a heavenly currency. I might not have money in my pocket, but when you come and say, I'm sick, I say, in the name of Jesus. I can't hear I'm deaf. In the name of Jesus, we open. Whew, but I don't have money. But I have something which is more precious than what? Than God. That's why we have people that come to church. They've done three operations, four operations, no way. In the name of Jesus. Look at faith. It's precious. More precious than what? That faith can even assist medical practitioner to do the right job, grace, for them to do a successful operation. We pray for successful operation. We say, no, no operation. How many women here say, no, 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 no operation? And I pray for them. 
Some, okay, go, it will, it will go well. This time, it will go well. You have done how many times? Six times operation, failure, failure. I said, this time, it will go. Look at what faith can do. Look what faith can do. But everybody has rejected faith. They want gold, which is perishable. Everybody's looking for gold. But they have something that makes money insufficient. You can't survive. If there's war in your nation, in your country, your money cannot make you survive. If they bomb everywhere, the cars, everything, but faith can make you move in the midst of what? Difficulties. When there's no money in the pocket, when there's no food on the table, faith can make you move and keep on saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because faith moves mountains. Yes, sir. Tell the neighbor, say, are you clear? Are you clear? Tell the neighbor, say, are you clear? Are you clear? Rejoice. Tell the neighbor, say, rejoice. There is good joy ahead of you. There is great joy ahead of you. Yes. Lastly, to close, we should never, ever define people by their immediate success. but by their capacity to stand difficult times, trials. Are you listening to me? I repeat again, we should never ever again define people by their immediate success. Hey, the man is making it. The woman, no. Define people by their capacity to stand when they are facing challenges. Because whether we fall or we stand, that is what makes a difference between reality and appearance. Because not all that glitters is gold. Can never say, not all that glitters is gold. Stop defining people by their immediate success, but by their capacity to stand in difficult times. We clap for them. Because whether we stand or we fall, that is what makes a difference between appearance and reality. How many of you have clapped for people? Yeah, hey, he's big man, he's big man, he's big man. Today you are afraid to talk about them. Big man has become small man. Because we have been defining people by their immediate success, not when trouble comes. We don't know a Christian when he's saying, hallelujah, blessing. We know a true Christian when things are hard, but you still see them going to church. When you ask them what is happening, they tell you that things are still tough, but God is good. God is in control. Because victory is not for those that quit, but those who endure. Life can never be flawless or perfect, but the goodness of God the grace of God is preserved and stored for those who endure. Tell never say life, life can never be perfect never or flawless. flawless. Mm. Mm -mm. It's nothing like that. It's nothing like that. The flawless life. This is not heaven. That's why Jesus said, to those who will endure to the end, 
I shall give them the crown of what? Of life. Jesus was telling us that life can never be perfect or flawless. There will be good and hard times alike. We need to manage and keep the balance. But many Christians are failing to maintain this balance. If we are to maintain the two aspects of Christianity, we must choose to be happy and rejoice even when we are going through hard times and facing grievous things. Then I will say, if we are to maintain the two aspects of Christianity, we must choose to rejoice and be happy in spite of our challenges and things that are grieving us. Rejoice. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let us rise up. Never say we must all have wounds to show. Show me your wounds. I will show you my scars. Our Lord Jesus appeared to Thomas and showed him the wounds in his hand. He said, It is me. Touch me and feel. Are you listening? These wounds on his two hands were mark of testament. They were marks of his testimony. He would have closed them since he's a miracle working God, but he kept them as a testament. Our wounds can be physical, emotional, but we must all have wounds to show. He kept his stripes on his back so that when we see him, we will recognize him as mark of his testimonies. When John saw him in Revelation 5, he said, I saw the one who was slain like the Lamb of God, and I knew that is Christ. Tell the neighbor, say, we must all have wounds to show. 
show me your wounds and I'll show you my scars. There are marks, symbols of our testimonies. Imagine I'm standing here. I don't know anything about cleaning toilets, anything about gardening. What will I talk to you about life? The same to you, your story. Your story. Somebody wants to hear your story. He is in desperate need to hear your story to get out of their desperate situation, to give them hope. Someone. No one wants to have this wonderful life changing stories of life. Imagine what will David tell us? What will Joseph, Mama's baby, Daddy's boy, that his brothers even hated him, that every time Daddy's always calling you, calling you, calling you, calling you. If he was not thrown into the dry pit where there was no water, where you saw to the Ishmaelite, to Potiphar house, accused of rape, sent to prison, from prison to the throne, assume that is why we are warned by the wise not to follow a captain or a general without wounds. <laughs> Jesus, the captain of our salvation, has marked symbols on his hands, stripes on his back as a testament to us, we that are alive, that we that at this world, there will be much tribulation, but we should cheer up. He has overcome the world. So, can never say never follow a general yeah. or a captain without wounds. It's very dangerous. It's like following a, a blind man to lead you. A man who doesn't see, just be guiding you. And the man is blind. One day, jiga, 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 you will fall together. Never. These are my wounds. Being in a toilet, being in there, this. From there to a, a prophet's garden. We want to say, ah, he's a prophet. Why can't he teach me? Let him pray for me, anoint me. <laughs> but the character of our faith was a problem. Tell me about the character of our faith was a problem. We face trials, challenges, and difficulties because of wanting the character of our faith, which needs to be perfected. If that character is not perfected, you are a problem. You are what? May God bless his word in your heart. Amen. May God bless his word in your heart. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. We believe you have been blessed by the video you have watched. Follow us on our social media platforms. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell. Like our Facebook page and follow us on Instagram and TikTok. John 14 verse 6, Jesus is the roadmap.